the Diamond Sutra, Vajra Chadika Prajna Paramita Sutra, also known as Perfection of Wisdom in 300 Lines, translated into Chinese in the Yao Qin Dynasty by the Tripitaka Master Kumarajiva from Kucha, translated from Chinese into English by Charles Luck. The unsurpassed, profound, and wonderful Dharma is difficult to encounter in hundreds of millions of eons. I now see and hear it, receive and uphold it, and I vow to fathom the Tathagata's true meaning. Thus I have heard. Once upon a time, the Buddha sojourned in the Jetavana Park near Shravasti with an assembly of 1,250 bhikshus. One day, at mealtime, the world-honored one put on his robe, took his bowl, and entered the great town of Shravasti to beg for his food. After he had begged from door to door, he returned to his place. When he had taken his meal, he put away his robe and bowl, washed his feet, arranged his seat, and sat down. At the time, the elder Subhuti, who was in the assembly, rose from his seat, uncovered his right shoulder, bent upon his right knee, respectfully joined the palms of his hands and said to the Buddha, It is very rare, O world-honored one, how well the Tathagata protects and thinks of all bodhisattvas, how well he instructs all the bodhisattvas. O world-honored one, when virtuous men or women develop the supreme enlightenment mind, how should their minds abide, and how should they be subdued? The Buddha said, Excellent, excellent, Subhuti. As you say, the Tathagata protects, cherishes, and instructs bodhisattvas so well. Now listen attentively, and I will tell you how the minds of virtuous men and women who develop the supreme enlightenment mind should thus abide and be subdued. Subhuti replied, Oh yes, world-honored one, I shall be glad to hear your instruction. The Buddha said, Subhuti, all bodhisattvas and mahasattvas should subdue their minds as follows. All living beings born from eggs, wombs, humidity, or by transformation, with or without form, either thoughtful or thoughtless, and neither thoughtful nor thoughtless, are all led by me to the final nirvana for the extinction of reincarnation. Although immeasurable, uncountable, and unlimitable numbers of living beings are thus led to the final nirvana for the extinction of reincarnation, it is true that not a living being is led there. Why so, Subhuti? Because if a bodhisattva still clings to the false notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, he is not a true bodhisattva. Furthermore, Subhuti, a bodhisattva's mind should not abide anywhere when giving alms. That is to say, he should give without a mind abiding in form, or he should give without a mind abiding in sound, or in smell, or in taste, or in touch, or in things. Subhuti, thus a bodhisattva should give alms without a mind abiding in false notions of forms. Why? Because if a bodhisattva's mind does not abide in forms when practicing charity or dana, his merit will be inconceivable and immeasurable. Subhuti, what do you think? Can you think of and measure the extent of space in the East? I cannot, world-honored one. Subhuti, can you think of and measure all the extent of space in the South, West, and North, as well as in the intermediate directions, including the zenith and nadir? I cannot, world-honored one. Subhuti, when a bodhisattva practices charity without a mind abiding in forms, his merit is equally inconceivable and immeasurable. Subhuti, a bodhisattva's mind should thus abide as taught. Subhuti, what do you think? 
Can the Tathagata be seen by means of his bodily form? No, world-honored one. The Tathagata cannot be seen by means of his bodily form. Why? Because when the Tathagata speaks of bodily form, it is not real form. The Buddha said to Subhuti, Everything with form is unreal. If all forms are seen as unreal, the Tathagata will be perceived. Subhuti said to the Buddha, World Honored One, Will there be living beings who can develop a true belief in these words, sentences, and chapters when they are expounded to them? The Buddha said, Subhuti, do not speak like that. In the last five hundred years, after the final passing of the Tathagata, there will be those who will observe the rules of morality and perform good actions which will result in blessing. These people will be able to develop a faith in these sentences which they will consider as embodying the truth. You should know that they will not have planted good roots in just one, two, three, four, or five Buddha lands. They will have planted them in countless thousands and tens of thousands of Buddha lands. Upon hearing these sentences, there will arise in them a single thought of pure faith. Subhuti, the Tathagata knows and sees all. These living beings will thus acquire immeasurable merits. Why? Because they will have wiped out false notions of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life of Dharma and not Dharma. Why? Because if their minds grasp form, they will still cling to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. If their minds grasp the Dharma, they will still cling to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Why? Because if their minds grasp the not Dharma, they will still cling to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Therefore, one should not grasp and hold on to the notion of Dharma, as well as that of not Dharma. This is why the Tathagata always said, Ye bhikshus should know that the Dharma I expound is likened to a raft. Even the Dharma should be cast aside, how much more so the not Dharma? Subhuti, what do you think? Has the Tathagata in fact obtained supreme enlightenment? Does the Tathagata in fact expound the Dharma? Subhuti replied, As I understand the meaning of the Buddha's teaching, there is no fixed Dharma called supreme enlightenment, and there is also no fixed Dharma the Tathagata can expound. Why? Because the Dharma the Tathagata expounds cannot be clung to and cannot be expressed in words. It is neither Dharma nor not Dharma. Why is this? All Bhadras and Aryas differ on account of the eternal Dharma. Subhuti, what do you think? If someone filled the universe with the seven treasures and gave them all as alms, would his merit be great? Subhuti replied, Very great, world honored one. Why? Because this merit is not the nature of merit, the Tathagata says it is great. Subhuti, if on the other hand, someone received and kept even a four-line stanza of this sutra and expounded it to others, his merit would surpass that of the giver of treasures. Why? Because, Subhuti, all Buddhas and their supreme enlightenment dharma originate from this sutra. Subhuti, the so-called Buddhas and dharmas are not real Buddhas and dharmas. Subhuti, what do you think? Can one who has entered the stream, or Shrodapana, have this thought in his mind? I have obtained the fruit of entering the stream. Subhuti replied, No, world honored one. Why? Because Shrodapana means, quote, entering the stream, but actually there is no entry into either form, sound, smell, taste, touch, or dharma. Therefore, he is called Shrodapana. Subhuti, what do you think? Can a Sakra Dagaman have this thought in his mind? I have obtained the fruit of a Sakra Dagaman. 
Subhuti replied, No, world honored one. Why? Because Sakura Dagaman means, quote, once more to come, but actually there is neither coming nor going. Therefore he is called a Sakura Dagaman. Subhuti, what do you think? Can an Anagaman have this thought in his mind? I have obtained the fruit of an Anagaman. Subhuti replied, No, world honored one. Why? Because Anagaman means, quote, no coming. But actually, there is no such thing as no coming. Therefore, he is called an Anagaman. Subhuti, what do you think? Can an Arhat have this thought in his mind? I have obtained the enlightenment of an Arhat. Subhuti replied, No, world honored one. Why? Because there is no Dharma, which is called Arhatship. World honored one, if an Arhat thinks, quote, I have obtained the enlightenment of an Arhat, he will still grasp and hold on to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. World honored one, the Buddha has declared that I have obtained the passionless samadhi and that I surpass all men. I am, therefore, the highest passionless arhat. World honored one, I do not think, quote, I am a passionless arhat. For, world honored one, if I had thought, quote, I have attained arhatship, the world honored one would not have said, quote, Subhuti takes delight in the calm and quiet, free from temptation and distress. Close quote. The fact that Subhuti does not act mentally is called the calm and quiet in which Subhuti takes delight. The Buddha said to Subhuti, What do you think? Did the Tathagata obtain anything from the Dharma when, in the past, he was with Daipamkara Buddha? No, world honored one. When the Tathagata was with Daipamkara, he did not obtain anything from the Dharma. Subhuti, what do you think? Do Bodhisattvas adorn Buddha lands by their moral actions? No, world honored one. Why? Because this is not real adornment. It is merely called the adornment of Buddha lands. Subhuti, this is why all Bodhisattvas and Mahasattvas should thus develop a pure and clean mind which should not abide in form, sound, smell, taste, touch, and dharma. They should develop a mind which does not abide in anything. Subhuti, supposing a man has a body as great as Mount Sumeru, what do you think? Would such a body be great? Subhuti replied, Very great, world honored one. Why? because the Buddha says it is not the real body, but is merely called a great body. Subhuti, if there were as many rivers like the Ganges as there are grains of sand in the Ganges, would the total grains of sand in all these rivers be very great? Subhuti replied, Very great, world honored one. These rivers would be innumerable. How much more so would be their sand grains? Subhuti, I now tell you truly, if a virtuous man or woman filled a number of universes as great as the number of sand grains in all these rivers with the seven treasures and gave them all away in alms, would his or her merit be great? Subhuti replied, Very great, world honored one. The Buddha said to Subhuti, If a virtuous man or woman receives and holds in mind even a four-line stanza of this sutra and expounds it to others, his or her merit will surpass that of the almsgiver. Furthermore, Subhuti, wheresoever this sutra or even one of its four-line stanzas is expounded, you should know that all divas, men and asuras should make their offerings there, as if the place was a Buddha stupa or a Buddha temple. How much more so if someone is able to receive, hold in mind, read, and recite the whole sutra? Subhuti, you should know that such a person will achieve the highest and rarest dharma. Wheresoever this sutra may be found, the Buddha and his respected disciples will also be there. Subhuti then asked the Buddha, World Honored One, 
What name should be given to this sutra, and how should we receive and hold it in mind? The Buddha said, This sutra should be called the Diamond Prajna Paramita, under which name you should receive and hold it. Why? Because, Subhuti, the Prajna Paramita, as expounded by the Buddha, is not Prajna Paramita, but is merely so called. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata expound the Dharma? Subhuti said, World Honored One, the Tathagata does not expound anything. Subhuti, what do you think? Are there many particles of dust in the universe? Subhuti replied, Many, World Honored One. Subhuti, the Tathagata says these particles of dust are not real, but are merely called particles of dust. The Tathagata says the universe is not real, but it is merely called the universe. Subhuti, what do you think? Can the Tathagata be perceived by means of his 32 physical marks? No world honored one, the Tathagata cannot be perceived by them. Why? Because the Tathagata says they are not real, but are merely called the 32 physical characteristics. Subhuti, if on the one hand, a virtuous man or woman in giving alms sacrifices as many lives as there are sand grains in the Ganges, and on the other hand, someone receives and holds in mind even a four-line stanza of this sutra and expounds it to others, the merit resulting from the latter will be greater. At that time, after listening to this sutra, Subhuti had understood its profound meaning and was moved to tears. He said to the Buddha, How rare, O world honored one! The Buddha has expounded such a very profound sutra. Since I have acquired the wisdom I, I have not heard of such a sutra. World honored one, if someone after listening to this sutra believes that his mind is clean and pure, he will realize reality. We should know that such a person will achieve the highest and rarest merit. World Honored One, this reality is not reality, but the Tathagata calls it reality. World Honored One, as I now listen to this sutra, I have no difficulty in believing, understanding, receiving and holding it. But in the last epoch, the last 500 year period, if there be a man who happens to listen to this sutra, believes, understands, receives and holds it, he will be most rare. Why? Because he will no longer think in terms of an ego, a personality, a being and a life. Why? Because the forms of an ego, a personality, a being and a life are not forms. Why? Because when he has rejected all forms, he is called a Buddha. The Buddha said, Just so, Subhuti. Just so. If on the one hand there be a man who listens to this sutra and is not filled with alarm, fear, or dread, you should know that such a person is most rare. Why? Because, Subhuti, as the Tathagata says, the first perfection, or paramita, is not so, but is merely called the first perfection, or paramita. Subhuti, the Tathagata speaks of the perfection of patience, or Shanti Paramita, which is not, but is called the perfection of patience. Why? Because, Subhuti, in a past life when my body was mutilated by Kaliraja, I had at that time no notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Why? Because, in the past, when my body was dismembered, if I still held the conception of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, I would have been stirred by feelings of anger and hatred. Subhuti, I also remember that in the past, during my former 500 lives, I was a Chantistri and held no conception of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Therefore, Subhuti, Bodhisattvas should forsake all conceptions of form, and resolve to develop the supreme enlightenment mind, Anuttara Samya Sambodhi. Their minds should not abide 
in form, sound, smell, taste, touch, and dharma, their minds should abide nowhere. If minds abide somewhere, it will be in falsehood. This is why the Buddha says that bodhisattva's minds should not abide in form when practicing charity or dana. Subhuti, all bodhisattvas should thus make offerings for the welfare of all living beings. The Tathagata speaks of forms which are not forms, and of living beings who are not living beings. Subhuti, the Tathagata's words are true and correspond to reality. They are ultimate words, neither deceitful nor heterodox. Subhuti, the Dharma the Tathagata has obtained is neither real nor unreal. Subhuti, if a Bodhisattva practices charity or dana with a mind abiding in things or dharma, he is like a man entering the darkness where he cannot see anything. But if a Bodhisattva practices dana with a mind not abiding in dharma, he is like a man with open eyes who can see everything in the sunshine. Subhuti, in future ages, if a virtuous man or woman is able to receive, hold in mind, read and recite this sutra, the Tathagata, by means of his Buddha wisdom, will know and see clearly that such a person will achieve immeasurable and unlimitable merits. Subhuti, if, on the one hand, a virtuous man or woman sacrifices in the practice of charity as many lives as the sand grains of the Ganges in the morning and at midday and again in the evening, and continues so doing throughout numberless eons, and if, on the other hand, a person after listening to this sutra believes in his own mind without further contradiction, the latter's merit will surpass that of the former. How much more so if this sutra is written, received, held, read, recited, and expounded to others. Subhuti, to sum up, the merits resulting from this sutra are inconceivable, inestimable, and without limit. The Tathagata expounds it to those initiated into the Mahayana and the Supreme Yana. If they are able to receive, hold it in mind, read and recite it, and expound it widely to others, the Tathagata will know and will see that they will achieve inexpressible and inconceivable merits that are without measure or limit. They will bear responsibility for the Tathagata's supreme enlightenment, or Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Why? Because, Subhuti, those who take delight in the Hinayana and hold the view of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, cannot listen to, receive, hold in mind, read and recite this sutra, and explain it to others. Subhuti, wheresoever this sutra may be found, all worlds of divas, men, and asuras should make offerings, for you should know that such a place is just a stupa, which should be revered, worshipped, and circumambulated, with offerings of flowers and incense. Furthermore, Subhuti, if a virtuous man or woman receives, holds in mind, reads and recites this sutra, and is despised by others, this person, who is bound to suffer from evil destinies and retribution for his past sins, and whose karmic sins are now eradicated by the other's contempt, will attain supreme enlightenment, or Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Subhuti, I remember that in the past, countless eons before the advent of Daipamkara Buddha, I met 84,000 milliards of Buddhas to whom I made offerings and whom I served faultlessly. Now, if in the last period of 500 years in the Buddha Kalpa, someone is able to receive, hold in mind, read and recite this sutra, his merits will far exceed mine, which resulted from my offerings made to Buddhas, for mine cannot be reckoned as one hundredth, one thousandth, one ten thousandth, or one hundred thousandth part thereof. In fact, no computation or comparison is possible. Subhuti, in the last period of the Buddha Kalpa, 
If a virtuous man or woman is able to receive, hold in mind, read and recite this sutra, my full statement of this person's merits will create derangement, doubt, and disbelief in the minds of all listeners. Subhuti, you should know that as the meaning of this sutra is inconceivable, so is the fruit of its reward. At the time, Subhuti asked the Buddha, World Honored One, if a virtuous man or woman is determined to develop the supreme enlightened mind, how should his or her mind abide, and how should it be subdued? The Buddha said to Subhuti, A virtuous man or woman who is determined to develop the supreme enlightened mind should thus develop it. I have to lead all living beings to put a stop to reincarnation and escape suffering. And when they have been so led, not one of them, in fact, stops reincarnating or escapes suffering. Why? Because, Subhuti, if a bodhisattva clings to the notion of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, he is not a true bodhisattva. Why? Because, Subhuti, there is not really a dharma which can develop the supreme enlightenment mind. Subhuti, what do you think? When the Tathagata was with Daipamkara Buddha, did he have any dharma by means of which he attained supreme enlightenment or Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi? No, world honored one. As I understand the meaning of the Buddha's teaching, when he was with Daipamkara Buddha, he had no dharma by means of which he attained supreme enlightenment. The Buddha said, Just so, Subhuti, just so. There was really no dharma by means of which the Tathagata attained supreme enlightenment. Subhuti, if there had been, Daipamkara Buddha would not have predicted, in your next life you will become a Buddha named Sakyamuni. Why is it? Because, quote, Tathagata means the suchness of all dharmas. If someone still says, quote, the Tathagata obtained supreme enlightenment, I tell you, Subhuti, there is no dharma by means of which the Buddha did so, because, Subhuti, that enlightenment was by itself neither real nor unreal. This is why the Tathagata says that all dharmas are Buddha's dharmas. Subhuti, these so-called dharmas are not, but are expediently called all dharmas. Subhuti, Supposing there is a man whose body is great. Subhuti said, World Honored One, the great body of which the Tathagata speaks is not great, but is expediently called a great body. Subhuti, in like manner, if a Bodhisattva says, I should lead uncountable living beings to put a stop to reincarnation and escape from suffering. He cannot be called a Bodhisattva. Why? There is really no dharma called bodhisattva stage. Therefore, the Buddha says, Of all dharmas, there is not a single one which possesses an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Subhuti, if a bodhisattva says, I should adorn Buddha lands, he cannot be called a bodhisattva. Why? Because when the Tathagata speaks of such adornment, it is not, but is expediently called adornment. Subhuti, if a bodhisattva is thoroughly versed in the doctrine of the unreality of ego and of things or dharma, the Tathagata will call him a true bodhisattva. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata possess human eyes? Yes, world honored one, the Tathagata possesses human eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata possess diva eyes? Yes, World Honored One, the Tathagata possesses diva eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata possess wisdom eyes? Yes, World Honored One, the Tathagata possesses wisdom eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata possess Dharma eyes? Yes, World Honored One, the Tathagata possesses Dharma eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? Does the Tathagata possess Buddha eyes? Yes, World Honored One, the Tathagata possesses Buddha eyes. Subhuti, what do you think? 
Does the Tathagata say that the sand grains in the Ganges are sand grains? Yes, world honored one, the Tathagata says they are sand grains. Subhuti, what do you think? If there were as many Ganges rivers as sand grains in the Ganges, and if there were as many Buddha realms as sand grains of all these Ganges rivers, would there be many world systems? Many, world honored one. The Buddha said, The living beings in all these world systems have many different minds, which are all known to the Tathagata. Why? Because the minds the Tathagata speaks of are not minds, but are expediently called minds. And why? Because, Subhuti, neither the past, the present, nor the future mind can be found. Subhuti, what do you think? If someone filled the universe with the seven treasures and gave all away in his practice of dana, would this good cause enable the giver to gain a great merit? Yes, world honored one, because of this good cause, the giver would gain a great merit. Subhuti, if the merit was real, the Tathagata would not say it was great. He says so because there is no merit. Subhuti, what do you think? Can the Buddha be perceived by his completely perfect physical body, or Rupakaya? No, world honored one, the Tathagata should not be so perceived. Why? Because the Buddha says the completely perfect Rupakaya is not, but is called the completely perfect Rupakaya. Subhuti, what do you think? Can the Tathagata be perceived by his completely perfect forms? No, world honored one. The Tathagata should not be so perceived, because the Tathagata says the completely perfect forms are not, but are called completely perfect forms. Subhuti, do not say that the Tathagata thinks, I must expound the Dharma. Do not have such a thought. Why? Because if someone says so, he will really slander the Buddha and be unable to understand my teaching. Subhuti, when the Tathagata expounds the Dharma, there is really no Dharma to teach, but this is expediently called teaching the Dharma. Then the wise Subhuti said to the Buddha, World honored one, will there be in future ages living beings who will believe this Dharma when they hear it? The Buddha said, Subhuti, the living beings you just mentioned are neither living nor not living beings. Why? Because, Subhuti, the Tathagata says these living beings are not really, but they are expediently called living beings. Subhuti said to the Buddha, World Honored One, does your own attainment of Supreme Enlightenment or Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi mean that you have not gained anything whatsoever? The Buddha replied, Just so, Subhuti, just so. I have not gained even the least Dharma from Supreme Enlightenment, and this is called Supreme Enlightenment. Furthermore, Subhuti, the Dharma is universal and impartial, wherefore it is called Supreme Enlightenment. The practice of all good virtues or dharmas, free from attachment to an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, will result in the attainment of Supreme Enlightenment. Subhuti, the so-called good virtues, or dharmas, the Tathagata says, are not good, but are expediently called good virtues. Subhuti, if on the one hand, a man in his practice of charity or dana gives away the seven treasures piled up in a heap as great as all the mounts Sumeru and the universe put together, and, on the other hand, another man receives, holds in mind, reads and recites, even a four-line stanza of this Prajnaparamita Sutra and expounds it to others. The merit resulting from the former's dana will not be worth one hundred, one thousand, one ten thousand, one hundred thousandth part of that obtained by the latter, as no conceivable comparison can be made between the two. Subhuti, what do you think? You should not say that the Tathagata has this thought in his mind, quote, I should liberate living beings, close quote. Subhuti, you should not think so. Why? 
because there are really no living beings whom the Tathagata can liberate. If there were, the Tathagata would hold the concept of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Subhuti, when the Tathagata speaks of an ego, there is, in reality, no ego, although common men think so. Subhuti, the Tathagata says common men are not, but are expediently called common men. Subhuti, what do you think? Can the Tathagata be recognized by his 32 physical characteristics? Subhuti replied, Yes, yes, he can. The Buddha said, Subhuti, if the Tathagata can be recognized by his 32 physical characteristics, a world ruler would be the Tathagata. Subhuti said to the Buddha, World honored one, as I understand your teaching, the Tathagata cannot be recognized by his 32 physical characteristics. Thereupon, the world-honored one recited the following gatha. He who sees me by outward appearance and seeks me in sound treads the heterodox path and cannot perceive the Tathagata. Subhuti, if you have in your mind this thought, quote, the Tathagata does not rely on his possession of characteristics to obtain supreme enlightenment, close quote. Subhuti, banish that thought. Subhuti, if you think it, while developing the perfect enlightenment mind, you will advocate the annihilation of all dharmas. Do not have such a thought. Why? Because one who develops the supreme enlightenment mind does not advocate the annihilation of things. Subhuti, if, on the one hand, a bodhisattva gave in his practice of dana all the seven treasures in quantities sufficient to fill worlds as many as sand grains in the Ganges, and, on the other hand, another man comprehended that all dharmas were egoless and thereby achieved perfection of patience, or kshanti, the latter's merit would surpass that of the former. Why? Because, Subhuti, all bodhisattvas do not receive reward for their merits. Subhuti asked the Buddha, World Honored One, why do bodhisattvas not receive reward for their merits? Subhuti, bodhisattvas should have no longing and no attachment when they practice meritorious virtues. Therefore, they do not receive a reward. Subhuti, if someone says that the Tathagata comes or goes, sits or lies, he does not understand what I mean. Why? Because the Tathagata has neither whence to come nor whither to go. Therefore he is called the Tathagata. Subhuti, what do you think? If a virtuous man or woman reduced to dust all the worlds in the universe, would those particles of dust be many? Subhuti replied, Many, world honored one. Why? Because if they really existed, the Buddha would not say they were particles of dust. And why? Because when the Buddha speaks of particles of dust, they are not, but are expediently called particles of dust. World Honored One, when the Tathagata speaks of worlds, they are not, but are expediently called worlds. Why? Because if they really exist, they are just agglomerations. The Tathagata speaks of agglomerations, which are not, but are expediently called agglomerations. Subhuti, that which is called an agglomeration cannot be spoken of, but the vulgar man has longing for an attachment to this thing. Subhuti, what do you think? If someone says, quote, the Buddha speaks of the view of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, close quote, Subhuti, does that person understand what I mean? No, world-honored one, that person does not understand. Why? Because when the Tathagata speaks of the view of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life, it is not really, but is expediently called the view of an ego, a personality, a being, and a life. Subhuti, he who develops the supreme enlightenment mind should thus know, see, believe and comprehend all things. He should not set up the perception of things in his mind. Subhuti, the so-called form of things, 
the Tathagata says is not what is expediently called the form of things. Subhuti, if on the one hand someone gave away in alms the seven treasures in quantity sufficient to fill all the worlds in uncountable eons, and if on the other hand a virtuous man or woman developed the Bodhi mind and received, held in mind, read and recited even a four-line stanza of this sutra and expounded it to others, the latter's merit would surpass that of the former. In what manner should it be taught to others? By teaching it without attachment to form, with the immutability of the Absolute. Why is it? Because all phenomena are like a dream, an illusion, a bubble and a shadow, like dew and lightning. Thus should you meditate upon them. When the Buddha had finished expounding this sutra, the elder Subhuti, together with bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas, upasikas, and all the worlds of divas, men, and asuras who had listened to his teaching, were filled with joy and believed, received, and observed it. <laughs>